scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Now the formula for wealth. Remember the formula. I told you this is the grand formula for wealth. Pastors don't teach it because most of them don't know it. They think that the reason why they are prosperous is because they are preaching the gospel. We established that, that that is an incomplete truth, it's a lie. No pastor is prospering just because he's preaching the gospel. It's not true. Any pastor that tells you that is simply because he doesn't know why he's prospering. It is not because you are a preacher that you are prospering. And at the same time, it's not because you are a preacher that you are poor. Let me use the opportunity and balance this. How many ladies have been praying that a man of God does not come close to them because men of God have been associated? The moment you say you are a poor person, they say, you went to school to read all of this just to be a pastor, as if it's a cause. And people say, ah, may God that sent you go with you. And the lady who is going with you, I pray for you. You see, all those kinds of pity. What? <laughs> What gave us this wicked mindset? If you come and say, Daddy, a pilot asked me, I'll say, are you joking? What did you tell him? Say, I'm thinking about it. Say, are you crazy? Go outside him and let's change our story. But the moment you say, Pastor, say, ah, Pastor. What did you tell him? I said, yes. I we have, you see that is a mindset. And that mindset has made many pastors to try to be rich anyhow to prove to the parents that when I married your daughter it was Gary you gave me your house but come and see what God has done you never get rich just because you are a preacher you get rich because of what the formula that I taught you and this is the formula that the amount of money we receive your wealth or your income will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the demand or the need for what you do your ability to do it and the difficulty in replacing you. This is the formula for wealth. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it's there. The amount of money you receive, your wealth or your income will what? Always, don't forget, always be in exact proportion to the demand or the need for what you do. This is why pastors are rich. Because what they are teaching, there is a need for it. Are you seeing that? Your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone. That you have skill and proficiency enough to do it well. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you. The degree to which it's difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is the exact formula for wealth. It will work for anybody, any day, anywhere. It's a principle. Unfortunately, preachers just tell you, tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do. Then favor will come. But because you do not understand, you will come and testify. Praise the Lord. I gave tithe or I dropped a seed in miracle service. And now somebody brought one million. The question is, will you remain a millionaire after three years? Two weeks after that testimony, you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed. Say, I refuse to be poor. Shout it, I refuse to be poor. I make up my mind to be wealthy. See, 
what I'm going to show you tonight if you remain poor after this series you were not fair to yourself I'm being very sincere with you when I show you what you're about to learn tonight see let me tell you brothers and sisters don't trivialize what you are hearing now people pay millions of naira to hear half of what you are hearing I have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth I got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas he's a living faith pastor and he stumbled across the wealthy place part two just the part two and I heard that when he listened to it he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them and say I've been a businessman and I have never had this this is somebody into oil and gas he said it changed his mind completely and now you are here seated and you're just nodding many of our parents if they had one tenth of what I'm telling you I promise you they would have been billionaires see this this thing is 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 so magical that no matter how dull is not left to your personal intelligence at all this is this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing if it was just a product of the y the x intellect some people would be disadvantaged but it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy it's god speaking to us So the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this. And we did a little personal evaluation. Take note of that. Let's go straight to the teaching of tonight. The wealthy place, part three. I'm on my way. On my way. On my way. To better days. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to better days. To better days. I'm on my way, on my way. multiple streams of income right tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income I pray you value it I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering see I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out and um, the greatest reward that I can receive for this is not 1 million, it's not 10 million it's not to say come and take a car or take a house and that's, that's not my concern the greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives for me this is the greatest consolation no matter what you buy or sow into my life is as irrelevant as whatever it will really grieve my heart if after this teaching your finances does not change I don't know what to tell you again. praise the Lord because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires billionaires all of them every single one of them if you have ever admired them this is the key I've reduced the work for you all the tens and hundreds of books seminars videos and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive if you don't act on it there's no reason why you should blame God unfortunately I know that not all of us will act on it it's a sad truth that's why Jesus told the disciples he said the poor you will always have with you meaning there are people no matter what they hear they will not change and the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us 
they will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes. Put your right finger. There's something I'm going to bring out and shake. Many of you say my, my story will change because you like things that don't commit you. You see why we like fetish things? Africa for that matter. They say turn around and slap something three times. They go, it's done. The man leaves rejoicing because that spirit of laziness we hate it. Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it. And you say, really? Just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa. Inheritance. He died and left it for me. That's why we love that scripture. The wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written. Wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born. Is that true? That scripture was even written before colonialism. And those who quoted it died without touching the wealth. My Bible says, God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge. And then he gives to the unbeliever to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer. We think that it's just because we are singing praises and tithing. Then Dangote will get up one day and say, um, Shahoma, there is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Um, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. But what an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA, his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline right we see faith we see patience you leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night i've told you preparation takes time it's manifestation that is instant we talk about joseph becoming the prime minister we forget that a woman lied that he raped her do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny we forget all that one and we just say in one day joseph came up from the day he helped someone to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him, yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. We are the ones who have deceived you. Pastors, pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently, but very wrongly. And we must admit it. I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy. Why? Because all we do is copy and paste. I go for a pastor's conference. I hear what a man of God I honor says. And you see, the fact that you are... Um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria. Because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich. Because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law, although he does not know it, so he is rich. And he thinks the reason why he is rich is just because he is anointed. No, sir. This is the reason. So many people are under pressure. If I must be rich like my daddy or papa, I must be a pastor. Right? So there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry. Racing to make sure they start churches. 
in a hope that if I have plenty members, imagine what it will translate to. Let me tell you something funny that someone told me. I think it was a year or two ago. We were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me. He said, man of God, you are the people enjoying ministry. See all the plenty crowd in Koinonia. You see, you see why he's poor? Because in his mind, he's saying, Abba, if everybody, prophets of if everybody gives you 10, 10,000 or 1, 1,000. You see that? On Koinonia database, there are about 6,500 people. Multiply that one time. It's even one, one. This is how poor people think. They just say, Kai, apostle, tell us the truth. You are enjoying. See? <laughs> if that's what you are thinking, how much have you given me? <laughs> how much have you given me your personal seed? No, that's wrong. That's not how you think. That's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. Sing it one more time. Sasaki Buchi. Sasaki Buchi. Verse 10. Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us, media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon, that which is that which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river. And then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it, there was gold. And the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry. But an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust, recession-proof financial life. Multiple streams of income. The greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in Nigeria Operating under the 6334 system, you know, completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four, five, six years or whatever. And then may add a master's or whatever it is. And the moment he graduates, the first thing in his mind, now please don't get me wrong, just follow me, I'm not against job. But the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed. It's not his fault, it's not her fault. The system designed you that way. Are you getting me? 
So the moment you finish, the first question elderly people ask you is, uh-uh, you are finished now. You say, yes. Say, so where are you walking? Not what are you producing? Not are you deploying your potentials? Where are you walking? So it trains you to serve. It trains you to walk. Now the trouble is this. The average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in Nigeria ranges within 50 to 100,000. Is that fair enough? That's about the amount, right? <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money, it cannot fund your vision. Are you getting the point now? A job was never designed to completely fund your assignment. Getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. Please listen to me. Operating under one stream of income, I don't care how successful that stream is, is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. That's the reason why many people never have enough. Now you are working and they think the problem is that their paycheck is just 100,000. Then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250, maybe 350. Some people never even earn that much. And then they find out that things do not change. Right? Because of Parkinson's law that your need will rise to meet your level of income. The meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama food. Is that true? So while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000, you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira. But you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira. So your need, your, your expenses will rise with your level of income. You were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it. And then you forgot that you are going to get married. You thought your wife was a toy. You don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat, a body to dress, and then you had the gods to get her pregnant. Here comes your twins. See that? Yet, hold on. Whether you call them children or adults, financially, they are three human beings. Are you getting me? Regardless of their level of consumption, they will still take something out from you. And then you have a dog. Oh. And then you have goats. You see, we, you don't know that all the... Once it is a living entity, it must consume. You have been counting yourself alone. Are you getting the point now? Now the trouble is, there is nothing called job security job security is an illusion you know what job security is job security means that you are working in a place where um, your your stay can be fairly predictable that you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there in the nigeria of today and in the 21st century the concept of job security does not exist Praise the Lord. Everybody say hallelujah. Say I got a federal government job. Which one? Civil defense. And you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years I will be there. You really think so? See that? So we find consolation. Oh, I'm working in a bank. And all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you, sorry, we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go. What did I do, sir? I said, no, no, no. You didn't do anything. We really appreciate you. In fact, your services are well needed. Can you leave? I remember somebody who got a job. I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel, one of these um, telecommunication companies. He was very happy. At the point he was preparing for his marriage, he prepared based on that budget. Then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something. And they told them they will share. You either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200000 and off you go. And he smiled and collected the 200,000. Because you see, when you are poor, you think 200,000 is a lot of money. Until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself, you know, 
will finish everything and then you find out that you are I will never forget a few days to his wedding he refused to come to the place where the wedding will take place I had to call him and say where are you he said I'm so so place I said leave that place right now and come what is all that can't be can't run away just come and trust God hmm. that's very true nothing in this world will satisfy this is a part of the song I love. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Every mundane, listen, the Babylonian system, this cosmos, the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich. It was designed to strangle you to death. That's why I like that song. He's the cup that will never run dry. Jesus, you're the You sing just that part one more time. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So, the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people why do we need multiple streams of income number one to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance all seasons please let me have four people I want to use them to just um, make an illustration three four people let me thank you just stand here guys watch this let's call these guys different streams just stand and face me thank you watch this if this is the first and only stream of income you have let's call this a job right who we'll identify what the others are shortly but let's assume this is all you have your job let's even call it a nice place nmpc that's where many of us dream of or shell or chevron or whatever it is you want to call it right watch this this is all you have number one it was never designed to fund your project and number two your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning it's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant if you were working in nitel in the 90s you would be happy because nitel was invincible i mean they were the only telecommunication company you would imagine that working in nitel by now you would have been the boss only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions remember when they used to use card you get a card and then you load it 200 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it you know and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping only for you to go and buy another one imagine within the last 10 to 20 years the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight, sincere people, and now they've been laid off. 
and they've remained there in their utter frustration. Five years have turned to ten years. Ten years has turned to fifteen years. And many of us look around and we say, Daddy, I grew up knowing you not to work. And they say, I've been waiting. Uh, even last week I submitted my CV. And look at this. He started that when you were five years. Now you are 25. For 20 years he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job. One stream. The beauty of multiple streams is this. Watch this. The, the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There is no stream of income that is perfect. What you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another. Are, are you getting the point now? This is part of the benefits. For instance, do you know that it's one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid? There are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months? Almost six months now. You notice. I'm sorry to say it, but most of the civil servants in Nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead. Completely dead. Are you seeing that? Those who have extra streams of income, while they wait for the salary to be paid, there's something to fall back on. See, they can laugh with you and say, Kai, times are hard, but it's not true. They are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard. They are identifying with that poverty mindset. So they say it's true, times are hard, but the truth is they are, they are, they are, on heaven. They are in heaven. Heaven on earth. You see that? So you find out that this person is here. God forbid his car is stolen. His salary alone was designed to take care of the family. But because there is another stream, in two or three months he has bought another car. For, so, for somebody who collected, he was loaned from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million. You have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car. You know you are finished. Whether you are to go for work or not, you must go. Because if not for anything, that loan must be paid. Out of the 2.5, you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000. You know that you are, the journey is still far. You cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are. So you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning. That's why they vent the anger on you. They get up and look at you. One, two, three, four, five, six children. Now the seventh one has come. There is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank. They now cut our salary from 200,000 to 150. And the man is saying, where is my life going? See, every man you have seen was not like that. Every man you have seen who is angry, beating his wife, I can tell you, if that's how he toasted the woman, she would have told him no. Something made them happen. Notice men from 50 years and above. That's why people don't even remember Father's Day. Because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked. It's not their fault. It's the inability to learn what I'm teaching you. And if you don't learn it, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, you are on the way to becoming exactly like that. Absolutely. In fact, it will be harder because the 21st century, living in the 21st century right now, is a lot more difficult and complex. Right? Well, if you factor in terrorism, if you factor in wickedness by people, put in all these factors, humanly speaking, that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time. Your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams. So you are an ocean receiving from many streams if one stream dries up there is another that can complement while you're working on that one then there is another there is no millionaire i know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people except those ones but there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire and trust me i've met a number of them in my life none of them operates under one stream is poor and average people, civil servants, that operate on one stream of income. You calculate everything, what the father and the mother is getting. For some, it's not even up to 100,000. And yet, the school fees of one child is 75,000 or 50,000 or even 30,000. Why would the man not be angry? 
Do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria? Have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry. Somebody will be moving and just kick something. Oh, and it just stress. Don't laugh. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time. By the end of this year, they will tell you you have come of age. And uh, we, we have seen how God has helped you thus far. From now henceforth, you are on your own. That's when it will dawn on you. You will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors, sincere people, very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of confession. Very funny statistics. Multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century. Activating multiple streams of income, hear me brothers and sisters, is the key to surviving the vicious tide. The vicious tide of economic hardship. Because it will happen. You have not seen recession yet. More will come. It's in your Bible. Right? Talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron. It will happen. You can't stop it. You can only exempt yourself. I choose to exempt myself. So I rather pay the price now and exempt myself. Hallelujah. Bless you guys. Thank you. So the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another. Now watch this. I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income. Write two words down. One, cash flow. Please, quickly, let's save time. We have to finish um, what we have. One, cash flow. Number two, write capital projects. One, cash flow. Two, capital projects. You are not... Listen, you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things. Watch this. Cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure. Is that true? Capital projects or the money, the income for capital projects talks about the resource, the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building, you know, school fees of your children and, and all of that, savings and so on and so forth. Now watch this. Our parents were taught so much about long-term projects. So they bought land, right? They have cattle, they have goats, they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects, but they did not make arrangements for cash flow. So you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency. You will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not, they didn't prepare for today, they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow. Are you getting that now? So they forgot that there will be needs. How many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1,000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke. 
He may say, I don't have money. You think he's joking, but truly, truly, there is nothing. That's a poor financial life. Yet he has land. Right? Yes, he has resources. Who owns this container? He's the person. Who owns this Coca-Cola depot? He's the person, but there's no provision for this. Now, the trouble is, in a bit to remedy that, the younger generation, our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow. You see the mistake? So, I need money now. I want to buy the watch of 20,000 now. I want to buy the trouser now. So you see somebody and say, man, this guy is rich. The watch of 20,000, shoe of 15 or 20,000. You are wearing a suit of this. You calculate everything on him and he's standing. He's wearing 200,000 and you are beguiled to think he's very rich. Steal everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow. Are you getting what I'm saying? So financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today, you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow. There are many of our parents who will start enjoying their money when they are 80 years. At 80 years, the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition. But at that time, they are too old. They can't do anything. They will die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone. And you will quietly just leave. Are you seeing that now? And then we, the younger generation, are so obsessed. I'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results. Watch people that graduate. Everybody wants to show I'm working. I now bought a car, a BMW, and um, I, don't, I no longer use the road. I now fly, I fly, I fly around. I'm flying to this place, I'm flying to that place. And then you carry your phone and say, this is, this is iPhone, iPhone what? iPhone 6. I, have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth? And then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich. That's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that asked me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all these were glittering you, are, you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today, you will enjoy today. If you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow, today, you walk naked tomorrow. If you eat the food you should eat tomorrow, today, get set for hunger. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. The key to activating multiple streams of income. Write this down. You do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses. Now, I listen to business people a lot, and I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences but the problem here, watch this. For many people, the danger huh, is that they just tell you, go and start up a business. Aside from your job, do something else. That teaching is very sincere but misleading. If you have received that teaching, I want you to throw it away now and listen to what I'm about to teach you. Because for many people, that's, that's the circumference of your business seminar. Are you getting blessed? So they've told you, together with the job, start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down god's system for activating your streams of income i want to teach you the kingdom system there is a babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration ends you in penury or you will be rich but at the expense of your salvation you will be rich but at the expense of very important things in your life 
everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom and this is where men of God must balance I believe in in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas but please hear me you must be careful not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook line and sinker many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word I don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs Eighteen verse sixteen. Quickly, it's a popular scripture we always talk about, but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time. What I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life. Proverbs eighteen verse sixteen. Let's read on. It says, "A man's gift." Please listen. Please pay attention. A man's gift does what? Does two things. What's number one? it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 there's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income
every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream look at david for instance almost every gift the bible identifies in david later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life i'm about to make a statement that is very striking maybe controversial especially for pastors i want you to listen to me do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that i want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there, be poor there, and die there. This kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century. You cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again. Or I am a civil servant. So when you call people, you say those who are civil servants, this side. And you see a mass of people like this coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is god helping you There are many pastors. I say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church, eating God's money. Pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things. And the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income. Now the man is a pastor and is earning 20,000 with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he's the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that god put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the lord without giving it expression every gift in you i plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr miles munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of bahamas faith ministry international and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know 
let me explain it to you what it means it, he he not own one aircraft boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them see it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if their conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was standing his father in lost sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak right there are so many things there are books to write i have different thoughts on different areas i can document my persuasions there are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up so don't you see a man of god rich and just think it's church money or just think and think are people not dashing their money you see articles blackmailing men of god all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has as though he's not supposed to be blessed people are arguing and complaining about one jet two jets my goodness i don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come if we need 100 jets we will buy all of them i guarantee you very unapologetically see that you can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity it doesn't have to be by crooks it doesn't have to be by pranks and you don't have to be angry at wealthy people they look like you you're of equal age but your mindsets are not the same your sacrifices are not the same your courage is not at the same level hallelujah never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents there are many of us who are seated here bishop td jakes the the pastor of potter's house right he wrote one book woman thou art loose just one book and that book brought him four million dollars multiply that by 210 naira there about that gives you the equivalent in naira because he deployed his writing potentials it became an added stream of income when people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million i said come on give the man a break he didn't steal anybody's money why will i be worth 10 million 20 million 
100 million and not live in a house how much is 1.2 how much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million don't insult people if a man buys a car of 20 million don't insult him and say he's extravagant compared to what you are gauging his success based on your level compared to what you see that these are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us we never forget we forget the fact that these guys are sick their tape ministry the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime just the books bishop oyedeko for instance i hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books and there are at least 60 books he has written how many of them are bestsellers yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom see the Bible says if any man lack wisdom let him ask not let him criticize those who are walking in it hallelujah ministry for me alone with all the blessings of ministry is only one stream of income there are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed i will never be poor it's not about being a preacher it's about realizing that once there is a demand for what i do and i train myself in the ability to see to do it when you are sleeping the wealthy people are awake studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them please i want to say this koinonia from today never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again you will never be like what you resent anything you drive away from your life you can never be like it honor is the seed for access hallelujah I'm friends to many by the grace of God many wealthy people and many millionaires I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions see that this is very important but then let me let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing now I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life that's the reason why god fragmented himself into different aspects you cannot know rafa by studying gyra gyra is a dimension itself rafa is a dimension itself sikenu is a dimension itself is that true el shaddai is a dimension itself but all of those names belong to one person i am so he said who do men say that i am and they were calling different dimensions of him as a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true 
that you do not stay on one place. You must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here. But see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of God but you must give them room to build their financial capacities. Don't over pamper people in the name of kindness. They will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity. Are you getting me? Many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things. When things go wrong or it fails, they will kill you. They will write articles about you. They will lock you up as a man of God. And so let people take their responsibilities by themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is God giving us wisdom? This is a mistake a lot of pastors have made. They come to church. Anybody just comes in and says, I'm a lawyer. I have some land. I am a this. I have that. And then the pastor comes and announces. And because people love the pastor, they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please I'm telling us especially for men of God who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of God define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there now there are other platforms you can create like Sunday Adelaja who created a lot of business platforms if you want to do anything that is business in the church set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this not in the name of the church but at their own risk that way whatever happens the integrity of the church is preserved is God teaching us I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands but this is giving us wisdom especially for those of us who are leaders don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people that they are praying in tongues and they hug you you don't yet know their attitude towards money they will stab you and kill you is God helping us let's continue so your streams of income should be around your giftings, should be around your abilities, your streams of income. Now look up, I want to teach you something please, very important now. Write this word down, time, T-I-M-E. Write this word down, time. Your life on earth is measured in time. Don't forget this. Your life on earth is measured in time. That means whatever you give your time to, you have given part of your life to. The time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life you are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time focus there is only limited time you have everybody has only 24 hours you cannot have 25 hours in a day so if you generate streams of income around your life 
and all of them require your time and your active participation you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time let me give you an instance if i write a book right now if i write one book right i communicate my thoughts maybe books on there's so many books that i have i'm just waiting for the lord to release me to begin to write books i know many of them will be bestsellers because i will not just get up and write books i will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them i have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so i can write a book right now for instance and then release it and i can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because i'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas i can write on i can write on the anointing i can write on wealth and prosperity i can write on leadership all the areas that i know god has granted me grace in i'm just showing you how one stream now i can be here and be effective in koinonia another thing for instance if i build an estate you see that if i build an estate there are people renting i don't even know them i've never seen them for instance but i'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing i've been called to do but there are channels that are bringing me in are you getting what i'm saying now very important if i teach assuming that we're selling our teachings imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry but god instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day this is the benefit every time you dispense value you must be rewarded whether you sell it or you give it free it's a law so we are not at a loss at all now imagine that today's message the media department will now package it the wealthy place volume one volume two volume three right and then maybe each of them is sold now you can imagine that and all of that is happening so people are buying it somewhere whereas you are still here as much as possible value your time your time is premium you must know that you cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything it's too much to give your life just for money no let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life i hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money you should chase after god chase after god seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom that's what is meant by his righteousness here and he said all other things will be added let's hurry up when you give your time you give your life never forget that the reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary number one you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your your skill number two you are exchanging your time these are the two things that go for your salary you cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life because you're 24 hours if you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom imagine that i cannot come for koinonia now and say because i'm trying to do something there i'm looking for money somewhere it's terrible i'm failing in my assignment it doesn't matter how much money i make so you have to be careful so that you don't just that's the language of those we call hustlers hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money right they have, their time is valueless to them so they can give it away just for anything my time is precious to me because my life is measured in time god gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and i focus on doing the things 
that are consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray, no time to build, no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. They started doing that when they were 20. Now they are 55. I'm busy. I'm busy. And then they die. Because on the seventh day, God rested. You, you are in the ninth day. You have not rested. You will die. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century. In the school of prosperity, especially in the 21st century, almost any and everything has a demand. There is a demand for almost any and everything. This is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years, in the next five years, should be poor. Impossible. There is a demand for just any and everything. The world is a global village. There is a demand for just anything. See? Right now, even people's laugh has brought them millions. Somebody just laughs. Is it not your ringtone? Oh, yes. Somebody just laughs around and does everything. That's side A. Does another one. That's side B. You see that? And you put it as your ringtone. And you go and download it. And you do a lot of things. Anything at all. Anything. A lady, because she has nice fingers, will make millions. Because she will market the ring of a jewelry company. They just keep putting rings on her hand. For every ring, $100,000. Can you imagine? Just for having a nice finger. There is a demand for anything. So you have been playing with that, your hand. Could it be that that's the rod of God? Just for being fine. You can wipe poverty away from your life forever. Right? Just for being not fine. You can still wipe poverty away from your life. Because you can be used in both ways. It depends on the message that is being communicated. Um, I'm just I'm speaking generally. There is a demand for everything. Absolutely everything. No matter how little the skill is, there is a demand for it. Look at how pastors, you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors. Allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge, scrounge after that. From today till Wednesday, non-stop, I have ministrations every day. I have a meeting morning and evening. You will think there are already enough pastors. No. No. There are 7.2 billion people. Right? You think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever. It's because you do not know how many people are on earth. When you know there is a demand for anything. And I told you the formula. Once there is a demand, there is money for it. You go and meet somebody and say, borrow me 10 naira. He'll tell you, I cannot but sell something he will pay you for it in the 21st century brothers and sisters you are only limited by your creativity you are only limited by your creativity ah there is a mighty financial army that will rise even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. 
There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. <laughs> Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. Can have a contract with most of the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people. And they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets. And it's blessing people. Millions of people are buying it. And this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything. That's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his song, but he became rich because you bought the thing. Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand. For your gifts or your potentials the reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it the reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it let me tell you in the world of prosperity you lose by becoming like every other person your uniqueness is what stands you out your competitive advantage There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon. the chains of him falling I hear the chains falling I will give you four streams of income that can help you that's, that's all we'll touch for this um, there are at least eight I call them recession proof streams of income they are all in the Bible but I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one 
has to be in a business or a corporate platform. Ready? Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. If we can get NIV, please give us NIV quickly. I hear the chains. Can we get NIV? Okay, fine. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. Please, let's save time. Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, Give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, It says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Uh, who has that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down land open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you are you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land it can only affect what is on it you will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate? They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate. How many people? 100,000 times all the people we have including all those who are online and I'm doing the same thing I don't need to talk louder I don't need to shout more the exact same thing 10 years after I have preached this or I have said this or I have delivered this lecture I will still be getting paid from it education one of the cheapest aspects of education is writing the ability to document your persuasion for as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear, you can document it. 
the only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense they are just hungry people looking for money so there is no excellence and no creativity and at the end of it only 100 copies are sold and the bookstore tells you please get out but there is a key purpose driven life right Rick Warren that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars it was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us education number three your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad you can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one. Transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things. But did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement. You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? Biology, Mr. Niger. Movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after Koinonia now. Listen, every week. I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there and you can't make any call you cannot even browse whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf these are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive right the 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 the, the driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and I tell you, a large percentage of that was for my money. Think about that. They are always happy. They, you never see them frowning. They are smiling because every time he sees me, he sees his destiny. And for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved you want to show people now you live in a three bedroom flat that is empty with one small mattress in one of the rooms and people think you are a big boy you are not big you are small whereas something would have been bringing you income let me tell you something the transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied it's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly from the first day the car goes out by evening money is coming 5 a.m. in the morning brothers and sisters there are people who get up begging whether it is town service whether it is wherever I 
I know someone who bought Kekena pen. Right? He just bought one, I think, second year or something like that. And then when he bought that Kekena pen, I think about 12,000 12, comes in every week. 12,000. He just went and registered it with the association, National Union, those are union. And then he's around praising the Lord and giving tithe every week. And you are saying, this guy is he a thief? Or, no, 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 no. Do you have to be smart to do that? Not necessary. You just have to be poor. And that's why I told you, there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year? To, to now? Some of you, millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand. Demand. The transport sector. There are many people dreaming, I will go into oil and gas. I will go into oil and gas. How much do you know it takes to start oil and gas? You want to be a thief? Can't you start gradually? How many people are sitting on 5 million, 10 million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions? You have eaten your own prosperity by yourself. How many people have started popcorn? Popcorn inside ABU. Is that not true? Popcorn. I'll never forget years ago when one of, I think that was in 2006 or seven. I wanted to start one popcorn machine, popcorn business in New Bamadi, and I wanted somebody to manage for me. So I needed to, I sent him to go and do a research for me on everything. I was surprised when the, the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day. You are eating, you bought it 30 naira, but many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it, graduation matric, it can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard. Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. Um, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon, you'll find out that the difference between you and graduation is one example. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor when there is such a demand? A de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more and about 60% of those people are ladies count the number of saloons you have in your campus are they up to 10? 
I doubt if they are up to 10. Servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people. If you have 1,000 more of those things, it will still not be enough. And yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been, we have been wired to consume. That's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are working. Many of us are, are going into food. Question, if we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. <laughs> I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No, if I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as god grants you the grace you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender say it after me Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow 100,000. You will borrow five million. Until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million. And you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you as you are sitting down right now. Not just from anything. Maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debts that you have eaten everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key you borrowed money for it you are smiling but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it you will be a slave forever it is one of the babylonian system that's why you notice i never talked about borrowing i'm sorry i know that this insults a lot of your business book, but i don't believe it in business we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt you use good debt as a leverage. You use bad debt for consumption. No debt is the kingdom's way. No debt. Say it. Shout it again. After hearing all that I've told you today, you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit. Or you can make up your mind and say this is it i've come to the end of myself lord i'm ready to begin to take decisions listen the key to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change, it must change. Listen, a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change. You will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator. In Nigeria, many people are the recipients of change. The wealthy people are the initiators of it. I choose to be in that category. I refuse to just be a benefactor of change. Or just a, a, a victim. Whatever happens, I write with it. No, sir. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Psalm 66, please. Psalm 66, verse 12. Psalm 66, 
verse 12. Media, can you help us please? Psalm 66. Please everybody rise. This is a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says we went through fire. We went through water. We went through times of hardship and turbulence. But by your wisdom, you have brought us into a wealthy place. I announce to you, Koinonia, there is a place called the wealthy place. There is a place. It's a place of plenty. It's a land of abundance. And it is absolutely left to you. I read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room at Area BZ, I remember getting up and making a vow. I said, Lord, this is it. If this is what it takes to be blessed, then I insist that I must be blessed. I read Miles Munro's books discovering your potential just that one book please hear me and I made a vow I told myself I know that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow I am willing to pay the price I told myself even if I have to leap into the wealthy place I'm going there I made up my mind I said I'm tired I made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity. I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money. I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything, the, the kind of money that will take me to hell. No. And for me to live in integrity, I knew that I would pay the price. I cry to the God of Israel. I remember it as clear as I'm looking at you. Tears were running down my eyes. And I said, oh God, I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life. I continued like that, but nothing really happened. Watch this. We're about to round up. I want to challenge you. 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever. Experientially, never to return there. Haven't done everything I did. I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. That night, it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. And they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things. And I went that night. I will never forget. I had just a bag, my one bag that they gave me, and recharge card, a rechargeable lantern, sorry. I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands. I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours, non-stop in tongues. 
I said, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this situation. Listen. For as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow. So I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television, signing checks of millions. I didn't have all of that. But I was determined to break out of poverty. Watch this. I wanted to move and the Holy Spirit told me to stay back. Look at this embarrassment. After everybody had given, then the Holy Spirit told me you can now go. In a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way, I carried my back. That was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed. Help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. When you are determined, all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings, you set your face like a flint. And I went there. When I went, I dropped it on the altar. Some people were laughing at me, of course, because the bag was not looking like something i'm sure they would just send it to one over it but that was my eyes listen and i returned back to my seat outside i stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times and while i stayed there the holy ghost spoke to me and he said son from this day you have entered wealth that's what the holy spirit told me he said, from this day, you have entered well. I will never forget. The next day, 6, 20, 6, 10, on the dot in the morning, somebody calls me shaking and says, are you Joshua Selman? I say, yes. I say, who are you? He said, I don't know you, but the Holy Spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life. Please, I need your account number. I said, what in the world is this? A few days later, the chairman, board of trustee of this ministry, he's a general now, he called me. And I think he transferred, how much was it? 400,000 or something into my account. No, no, no. He first gave me 150,000. He said, the Lord led me to tell you that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera. They were doing a pro. <sighs> Within a span of about one week, having prepared myself, the door started opening mysteriously. In less than four to five months, I made my first meeting. I will never forget how it felt that day. Not borrow, not father's money, not uncle and auntie, not our money. I just stood there. And I said, there is a wealthy place. Time will never change anything. Decisions do. I'm going to challenge everyone to sow a seed. If you don't believe in what I'm saying, please stop. We're rounding up. The Lord led me to do this. I'm going to challenge everybody. I want you to sow a seed. It's very important. I can help you. It's not about money. You know that we are people of integrity here. But I want to challenge you to sow a seed. Even if it's not something you can do now. But I want to challenge you something that you will connect with and say lord i'm tired please if you don't believe it you don't need to argue just just remain where you are but i have seen this is the correct context in which sowing of seed comes into place not just telling people so 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 no 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 no. when you guide them and this foundation is there then you will sow there is a minimum offering there is a minimum amount I can never give God less than that for the rest of my life. I will be a wicked person. No! I put a benchmark not in the house of God again. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. We have called it the year of the rain. I don't want to fool you. We are not native doctors. There is a law. Please, I want you to package a seed and lift it up. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We 
have touched the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, just one time. Hey, take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. While I was preparing for this meeting, I was about to give and I said, when the Lord told me, I said, Lord, how much do I give? When the Lord mentioned the amount, I said, wow, serious. What if it is for you? There is no amount. No amount. Because I will be a fool. I remember where God took me from. You have heard people say it outside. Now you are seeing somebody who is a testimony of it. It works. It's not just Mike Modok saying it. It's not just Bishop Oyedeko. God is no respecter of persons. You are going to pray on this seed and say, Lord, let this be the seed that will open up creativity. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Lift your voice. We are out of time. Shikababakata pratakata balalaba. Prove me now, here with say the Lord, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and give you ideas, concepts, creativity. Please pray. Isaiah 45, please quickly. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. Media, give us quickly. And then after that, we'll look at 48, verse 17. Please, please, please hurry up. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. And then 48. Verse 17, Isaiah 45. I found this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life. One to read. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Read on. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. Never forget this. And I will give you the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. That I'm, you may know that I, the Lord, which calleth thee by name, I am the God of Israel. 48 verse 17. He says, I will give you the treasures. There are treasures in dark places. Hagar was in a place where there was water. But she thought she was in a wilderness. When the angel appeared, suddenly she saw the water. It takes this seed is the seed that will open you up to opportunities and open you up to all kinds of things. Read verse 17, everybody. One to read. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. I can lead you to the business. I can connect you to the people. I can show you what financial vehicle can turn around your life. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Lord, with this seed, turn around my captivity. Are you praying, Koinonia? Like the streams of the naked. I am the Lord that teacheth thee. God can teach you to profit. God can teach you to profit. God can show you when many people are looking you can see the treasures of darkness 
the gold mine that you have been sitting on ask the Lord to open your eyes through this sea is the year of the rain 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 lord i'm tired of this financial level i'm tired of this dimension with this sea i ask for an outpouring of creativity and outpouring of insight show me what i need to do to take that business to the next level show me the streams of income that i need to put my hand upon and by favor bring me resources bring me people bring me opportunities They know not, neither will they understand. They grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Hallelujah. Lift up your seed above your head as I pray for you. Father, we mean business with our financial destinies. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, these seeds that are lifted, cursed be me and my generation if I've misled your people and if I've deceived them. But Lord, if what I have taught your people is the truth of God's word, I pray that there be a performance. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, in a mysterious way, beginning from the month of July, open people up to mysterious dimensions of wealth in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you God will connect you to business ideas for some of you you will rise up like giants and begin to activate streams of income and you will never have to beg another day in your life again father I pray that as a result of this seed may there be an anointing that will move them into putting to use what they have learned every spirit of complacency every spirit that renders the word of god of non-effect i command that spirit to live your life right now with this seed i command business ideas to multiply in your mind some of you before this service is over god begins to drop strategies on how to begin to set up structures value adding structures in the name of jesus christ with this seed we cause poverty to his roots in the name of jesus we cause poverty to his roots in the name of jesus lord let there be abundance in this house may this place become the wealthy place a place of abundance in the name of jesus christ in one minute just cast your seed as you pray in tongues very quickly ushers let's do that in one minute cast your seed very quickly and pray in tongues pray my story is changing oh god god is not a man that he should lie not a son of man that he should repent pray in tongues quickly in one minute Mabra to kaso to lava katenia, shaka taka taka tebela de boss. Manta prata skata badia tapa koso to prata gade. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Those worshiping with us for the first time, please make your way out while I speak to the house. If we are worshiping with us for the first time, just keep coming out while the rest of us lift our hands. Please very quickly those worshiping with us for the first time inside and outside make your way out here and the rest of us lift your hands in the name of jesus i prophesy upon your life that tonight in your sleep and in visions and in dreams may creative ideas be released to you in the mighty name of jesus christ 
I pray for you from the depth of my heart that the resources to begin to activate the streams of income as much as you need receive it right now in the name of Jesus where you have been stagnated and confused on account of your sowing in the name of Jesus I pray for you this night that chain of stagnation is broken for those of you who have sowed this seed for your families I pray that the same way God is changing your story may he change your stories in the name of Jesus for many of you between now and miracle service you will come and testify of new financial strength multiplied favor in the name of Jesus may God give you grace to be men and women of integrity in the name of Jesus I pray for destiny helpers may God send destiny helpers to help you set up the relevant businesses and to take your ideas from dreams to fruition in the name of Jesus your hands are blessed blessed with an anointing to prosper where you have failed go back again and my God will lift you and honor you in the name of Jesus Christ those who have laughed at you very soon they will begin to laugh with you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for courage for you in the name of Jesus it takes audacity to begin to take bold steps receive the grace to take bold steps no more waiting no more waiting I kill the spirit of procrastination beginning from tonight I challenge you no more waiting no more waiting it's time to arise it's time to shine and it's time to break forth in the name of Jesus lift your hands and give God praise hallelujah those of you worshiping with us for the first time thank you so much um, this is our financial series the wealthy place thank you very much for coming this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international thank you so 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 much for coming and for all those who invited them thank you so much for this sacrifice we're here every um, every Friday and we invite you to be part of us next week again as we have another dimension of God's word we want to pray for you your life will never be the same stretch your hands saints of God and let's speak over their lives prophesy you're on your way to better days that's our prophecy to you for coming here we are praying that the heavens are open over you that the ideas that you have received the insight the change the mental revolution will change your life forever we bless you with hunger for God we bless you with insight into scripture and we pray that your financial destinies will turn around forever in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen thank you so much I'd like you to just um, follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then they'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat God bless you celebrate them koinonia this way just follow the gentleman this way thank you so much for coming don't be tired celebrate them koinonia hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.